Welcome back to the template tutorial series. In this episode, we'll look at three of the most popular ways to build a template and examine the upsides and downsides of each approach in detail. I've probably said this before, but I should point out once more that all of these approaches have their own workflow. You should try them all to find out which suits your way of working best. First, let's look at pre-built and saved track presets. This approach involves first building a large template right inside Cubase using instrument tracks with one instrument per track. Once you've completed the template, all you have to do is save each of the tracks as a preset. You'll probably also want to save groups of tracks, for example, all the string sections from one specific library together. After that, you can go ahead and delete all of the instrument tracks you'll be reloading only ones you want to use in a specific project. There's also another way to achieve essentially the same setup, which is to save your big template after you've finished it, then start a new project and use import track from project to bring in any tracks that you need. This approach has a number of benefits. First, the project file size is quite small. Second, the project will load at a reasonable speed. In fact, it'll load at the same speed as a project that doesn't use a template. Third, because you'll only have relevant tracks in your project, navigating the project remains quite simple. However, using track presets also has some significant downsides. First, you need to find and load necessary presets. You should probably stick to a naming scheme where you can easily remember the names that you've used so that it's quick to search for track presets. Otherwise, trying to navigate the preset window is quite cumbersome. Second, once you've found your instrument or group of instruments, you'll have to wait while they load, which can take a fair bit of time depending on what kind of instruments you're using. Third, because of the last two points, it is difficult and time consuming to audition different instruments. Fourth, switching between projects is slow, as you'll be waiting for all of the samples to unload and then reload again. And fifth, you're limited to the resources of a single computer and this might become a problem even with the most powerful workstation, if you are, for example, working on a very complex orchestration, or using multiple microphone positions, or even working in surround. Next, we'll look at another way to build a template that many people swear by, using disabled tracks. This feature is available since Cubase 7.5. For this approach, all you need to do is to build a massive template using instrument tracks with one instrument per track. Once you've added a track, configured the instrument, set up its routing and processing, you can then right click on the track header to disable and later also re-enable the track. Disabling the track unloads the instrument from memory. The clear upside of this is you'll free up all unused resources. Also, it's relatively easy to audition instruments. All it takes is a single click or a key press to load your track Although, of course, you will have to wait for your samples to load, and that'll take a bit of time. Project loading times, however, are reasonable, as disabled tracks themselves load very fast, and enabled tracks will simply load as normal. However, using disabled tracks comes with a number of compromises. First, your project file will contain all the info about your tracks, so the project file will be huge. If you're in the thousands with your track count, then your project file is likely to be over a gigabyte in size. If you rely on saving multiple revisions or versions of your project, then you'll notice the toll this is taking on your available storage pretty soon. Second, because the project file is very large, it takes a long time to save. Depending on your template size, you could be looking at 5 up to 15 seconds of waiting time every time your project is saving. Most users find this very annoying in combination with autosaves, as your project will lock up while saving. Third, navigation will be trickier due to the large number of tracks, and you'll want to have a good strategy for it. And finally, you'll again be limited to the resources of a single computer, which may or may not be enough, depending on your needs. And then there is the third option, which is my preferred method of working, using Vienna Ensemble Pro. This approach uses an additional piece of software which hosts all of the instruments outside of Cubase. Building this type of template is 
most likely more time consuming than the alternatives. But it comes with some serious upsides. First, your Cubase project files will be very, very small. Second, using VNR Ensemble means not having to unload and reload samples between projects, if your projects are using the same samples. As a result, loading and unloading projects is very fast. Third, same goes for saving projects. This method is faster than the others. Fourth, and perhaps the most notable difference, Vienna Ensemble allows you to use multiple computers. While even the most powerful single computer will eventually be brought to its knees, VE Pro allows you to expand by adding a second or third machine. Or why stop there? Some composers use half a dozen computers, or even more. Fifth, Vienna Ensemble is very efficient with computer resources and is reported to achieve better multi-core performance than Cubase or any other DAW for that matter. Sixth, every track is loaded and ready to go, so auditioning different instruments is very quick and very easy. And finally, Vienna Ensemble also has the option of disabling tracks, so you could for example disable less used instruments if you're finding yourself running out of computer resources. However, all of these upsides do also bring with them some compromises. First, in addition to your Cubase project files, you will now want to save and archive your VE Pro metaframes. If you tweak them often, you'll need one per project. However, for example, when scoring a feature film, you may have one master template and many projects for different queues using the same file. Second, setting up VE Pro is more complicated and time consuming than the other methods I've described especially if you are adding more computers to your setup. Third, like with any large template with numerous tracks, navigation will be complicated and you will want to use naming schemes, folders, visibility settings and perhaps also third-party software to help with navigation. And finally, hosting samples outside of Cubase introduces an extra buffer of latency, while the audio gets sent back from VE Pro. However, on a well-optimized system, using VE Pro will often be more efficient and use less resources than the equivalent setup loaded straight into Cubase. This in turn might make it possible for you to reduce the overall buffer size in Cubase, reducing the latency. The ideal end result compensates for any latency increase caused by using VE Pro in the first place. However, it's important to note at this point that since the addition of ASIO or ASIO card, I'm never quite sure how to pronounce that one. Anyway, Cubase now has this clever latency priority system in place that essentially allows the track in focus to be played with very low latency. ASIO guard does not get along very well with VE Pro, however, and cannot be used to the maximum effect. In my setup with ASIO guard and low, VE Pro works acceptably, but I can't really say I've observed a significant gain in performance. Medium and high settings, however, cause more conflicts and have led to crashes. A solution has been talked about by both Steinberg and VSL for quite a while, but has yet to materialize. Therefore, as things currently stand, you are most likely looking at a slight increase in latency when using VE Pro. However, with an efficient setup, this increase will be minimal. For the next few episodes, I will focus on my preferred approach, which is using VNR Ensemble Pro. I'll share some of the thoughts on how to structure and set up a template with VE Pro, and look at my own template in detail as an example. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.